watching the gym. That's creepy. Yo, know, team of Demon Slayer is all I can think of. Love that shit. I didn't necessarily mean anime, chat. I meant, be like, normally there's the void that I feel like I fill to an extent when I'm streaming. But I haven't been streaming the last couple of weeks, so I was wondering what you guys have gravitated to outside of that. In general. If it's anime, that's fine, but I didn't necessarily mean anime. I didn't leave you guys without a horizon fix because Moon's still been killing it. Iki Blinders, I actually heard that uh, the final season's coming out soonish, so that, that would be a show I wouldn't be opposed to picking up. I've been trying to marathon Daredevil, and I realized I don't remember anything in season two. I remembered a lot of season one. I don't I don't remember anything in season two, but Daredevil's about to get kicked over to uh Disney Plus instead of Netflix, so I won't have I won't have access to it anymore. Yeah, unless I stay up all night watching Daredevil tonight, and that would only be to finish season two. I don't know season one. The episodes are like an hour long. Season one has like fifteen episodes in it. Season one was really good at Daredevil. Um, I'm sorry, allegedly. You've embarrassed me in front of Vanessa. And if I was going to do it right, I would watch Season 1 and 2 of Daredevil, and then I would watch Season 1 of The Punisher. And then I think Season 3 of Daredevil, and then Season 2 of Punisher? I don't know. Punisher got two seasons, right? Before it got cancelled? I am intentionally skipping Jessica Jones, because I heard Jessica Jones was really boring. And also Iron Fist and Luke Cage, because they weren't much better, from what I understand. Like, Luke Cage was okay for a little while, but... Iron Fist was ass, if I remember correctly. You're doing it right. Jessica Jones was great. The only people who I knew, I didn't know a lot of people. But the only people I knew who watched Jessica Jones just said it was really boring. Because she's not like a superhero, right? She's just a girl. Doing stuff? Or am I on crack? Don't sleep on Jessica Jones? Okay. I'm gonna have to pick up Disney Plus want to continue this venture anyway. I have a lot to get through. But Daredevil and Punisher tie in so heavy together, I feel like I can't avoid watching Punisher. Not that I want to, because it sounds cool. She has super strength? Oh. Did Luke Cage Season 2 get cancelled, or was it just bad? I know Iron Fist got canned quick. Jessica Jones got two seasons. Punisher got two seasons. And then Daredevil got three, and that thing kind of ended. Well, and then fucking Hawkeye and... No Way Home, but y'all know. That's actually why I got back into it. Oh, I started getting back into it. Nah, she saw Hawkeye, right? Or you know what happens with Hawkeye? Oh, they all did get two? Okay. Those got cancelled not because they were good or bad, but because Disney acquired Marvel. Are we sure at least one or two of those shows didn't get cancelled because they were bad? Are we sure Iron Fist didn't get cancelled? 
I know who makes camo. Okay, that's, that's all I was. That's all I was gonna touch on. Did you see No Way Home with the Spider Man? Yeah, me too. I didn't know he was in it. That was a spoiler. I'd avoided 100%. When he popped up, at first you see him and it's like, oh, that's badass. Catches a motherfucking brick. I'm a really good lawyer. <laughs> yeah, that's tight. Did you see the news with him recently? Charlie Cox, the actor, went to went to a No Way Home premiere, and he was all excited, and his wife, he knew his scene was coming up, and his wife was filming him. He was so ready. And, uh... Nobody in, hit, nobody in the movie theater he was at popped off for him. I don't know what theater he went to, but nobody in the movie theater he was at popped off for him. And he just, like, apparently in the video they got, you could just see the life leave his face, because, like, just nobody was excited. And it's like, man... I got excited in my theater. I heard people excited in my theater, and my theater wasn't full. Thankfully, because there's still COVID shit going on. Um, especially if you're going in there with a bunch of day oneers. I don't know, man. That is heartbreaking, because, like, everyone else who I saw commenting on it was like, everybody popped off in my theater. Sushi, thank you for the raid, bud. Appreciate you. Sorry, we're talking about Marvel shows. We were weaving out, talking about anime and manga earlier. Uh, we were talking about Marvel shows, talking about wrestling before. We're just kind of all over the place today. How y'all doing? Appreciate the raid, Tushi. Well, sure, Nos. Another thing I think might have happened to him, especially if he caught like a day one crowd, is that he he might have got a lot of people just going to it because of the hype. I don't think the years ago argument works necessarily because Amazing Spider-Man and, and the Tobey movies were also years ago, but um, I see what you're saying in the separation still. Uh, you might have caught a bunch of people who like aren't that into Marvel, but the hype of Spider-Man No Way Home when they're just people who get in first and like, we're going to go see this. Like, he had to have gotten a bad crowd. Cause, like Everybody I knew popped the fuck off. Shy Hood, think of the 47 motherfucking months. Appreciate you. Peter popped off, especially with the brick. I mean, yeah, you see him and you're like, okay, that's enough. Like, that, that's more than enough. I'm thrilled he's here. And then the fucking brick thing happens. It's like... He didn't go day one. The article said he has already talked with his cousin whose theater did pop off. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That also makes sense. in my theater by myself. I don't know if being that guy's okay. I don't know. I'm torn on that because like I like getting hype in the theater but like if it's a reason to get hyped that everybody's getting hyped for. Like I'll never forget the moment when uh when I'm watching Endgame in theaters and you see Thor's hammer come flying by and you think it's going to Thor and that shit flings over to the cap, everybody popped off. That's fucking great. <clears throat> Doctor Strange 2. I mean, yeah, now they're doing Multiverse of Madness and they've kind of opened the door. Literally anything's possible. It's gonna go nuts. I am a Wanda apologist, I'll say it. I don't condone what she did. I just really like her as a superhero. I 
I skipped his movie. No, the foreshadowing wasn't his movie. The foreshadowing was Avengers 1. Uh, 2. Ultron, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Ultron because they're all drunk and like Tony Stark up in Tony Stark's like penthouse. And uh, Thor puts the hammer down. Um, and they, they do it like it's just a drinking game where they go to test who could move it. And, you know, Tony goes up and then he can't do it, obviously. And then he puts like a turbo glove on and he tries to do it with that and he, it still doesn't budge. And everybody's taking turns. And Cap goes to do it. And when Cap does it, nobody else sees it move except Thor. Thor saw it move an inch. Just, just, a, just a little sliver. And it, his eyes kind of got wide for a second. And you kind of notice, he's like, oh. And as far as I'm aware, that's the only indication ever. Like, that's the only foreshadowing ever. But it was enough for me, because as soon as that happened, I was like, that's the coolest shit ever. I'm not a Captain America guy either. Uh, Iron Man's my dude. But, uh, that moment threw me. I was into the crazy. I didn't say I was into Wanda, okay? I'm into Elizabeth Olsen, they're not the same thing. I'm just saying I like Wanda as a superhero. Hey, what up, Rumble? How you doing? I'm into Wanda, nothing wrong with that. Do your thing. You don't care? <laughs> Look, I'm not judging. I'm just, I was, I was saying where I'm sitting. Canonically, Steve faked it? According to the movies or some comics? I find it hilarious in the trailer, he goes, she goes, wow, you make one mistake, you don't say anything, but I make one mistake and I'm public enemy on one bitch, he didn't imprison people against their will for months. No, I just imprison people against their will for like a couple hours. But they flew in from another universe, it was a little different. Here we go with the detractors, Naruto, get, Naruto, actually Naruto, get in front of me, protect me. We're on the same side, but I need help. <laughs> I think I like, I don't know if you want to call it a trope. I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily, a, I, I guess it would be a trope. I think I like the trope where, like you can call Wanda a villain or a hero or whatever. I mean, it, if, even if you call her a villain, it still makes sense. Um, but she just went through some, like a lot of traumatic shit and she was just so broken and she got to a point where all she really wanted to do was love. And the birth of WandaVision and everything that happens there coming from that is just, I really fuck with that as a, as a PB move thing. I don't know. I, I, I like that whole premise a lot. And to watch the other Disney Plus Marvel shows, I've only seen Hawkeye. WandaVision. I, I also liked WandaVision a lot as a show. Because, especially the first few episodes, it is so different and weird from anything you've seen. And it was Marvel taking a risk, and I, I, liked, I liked the way it went a lot. Um, it becomes a lot more normal, I guess, of a show by the end. But in the first few episodes, I, I was fucking with that. I could not wait for the next week. I watched that week to week. I could not wait for the next week because I was like, that was so fucking weird. I need more. I've seen Loki, too. Yeah, Loki's also really good. If you're gonna, I, I would recommend... Personally, they're the only ones I've seen, but I would recommend those two shows first. If you were going to crack into more uh, Disney Plus Marvel shows, uh, Loki and WandaVision are both great. I think I liked WandaVision more, but I can't blame anybody for liking Loki more. I think the only reason that I, I think the only reason Loki's not that up there as much is because the ending to season one of Loki is just busted wide fucking open. Like you know, there's more shit coming, and you didn't really get closure like you did with WandaVision. I think we can cut out the first three episodes of one and it would be nearly the same. You could. I don't want anybody to do that because I love those episodes, but you could. The first three episodes are like... 
like the whipped cream and cherry on top of something, except it came first. It's like getting to the bottom of an ice cream bowl and being like, oh shit, there's a... F no, no. It actually is just the whipped cream and cherry, because that's what you're going to eat first. First three episodes of Water Vision were so great. I hated those first three episodes. They were boring to me, just speculating. Yeah, I think it might have even racked me a little bit more because I was week to week on WandaVision as it was coming out. So it's just like, oh, that was so fucking weird. What is happening? You have that shit near the end of and near the end of the first episode. And then they roll into season, you know, episode two, and it's just it it's almost like a horror movie, like a horror show for a little bit, where they just keep cranking up the weird and like you know something's wrong and you know something's gonna break and you don't know when or how. Other than that, uh, none of the other shows... You didn't like Loki? I fucked with Loki. I fucked with Loki. I've seen Tick, Tick, Boom on Netflix. I have not. I've seen it advertised to me a lot. Andrew Garfield's turning 30, even though he's like 36 in real life or something. I have not seen What If. That's the one I should be watching. If I'm going to go back to Disney stuff, I should watch What If. I heard a lot of good stuff about that. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I started Falcon and Winter Soldier. I didn't get very far. Andrew's 38? Oh my god. Yeah, he, they just released Tick Tick Boom in which he's a guy who's 29 going on 30 and he wants to accomplish something big before he turns 30, is my understanding. That's what the whole movie's about. He's older than LeBron James. Make it make sense. I mean, we've been very aware of LeBron since LeBron was 18 years old. What's up? Morgan, they have 26 months. Appreciate you. Napped in that movie. I recommend watching. Um... I feel like a movie that I would have watched that would compare to Tick, Tick, Boom, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you can tell me if you've seen it. Because I don't watch a lot of movies like that. Um, where it's just kind of a guy trying to do a thing, if that makes sense. Uh, Tyler's over 40? God damn, I didn't know that. Uh, anyway, I watched Nightcrawler. And I, I like that movie a bit. Um, I like Nightcrawler quite a bit, but like, how does it compare to Nightcrawler? Because like I said, I just, I don't have a lot of movies to go off of where it's just watching Guy try to do thing. Um, another movie I can think of that I, I actually haven't watched in like 10 fucking years would be the movie Drive. I want to rewatch the movie Drive with Ryan Gosling. I remember liking that movie. Yeah, and I call it with Jake Gyllenhaal. Dude is a great A sociopath. Another movie that I feel like would line up with something like Drive or Nightcrawler or what I think Tick Tick Boom would be like would be Joker. Where the movie really centers around one actor just killing his fucking role in whatever he's doing, right? I think you get that with all those movies. Um, if you're just looking for a movie revolving around actor and they just do great at their role. I feel like Drive, Nightcrawler... I can speak for Drive, Nightcrawler, and uh, Joker. Which I didn't actually like Joker that much, but like ja Jaquan Phoenix fucking killed him. Uh, and then it sounds like Garfield does that with Tick, Tick, Boom. 
I did finish Witcher Season 2. I finished Witcher Season 2 not long after it came out. I started rewatching Season 1. When they announced... Because, like, Netflix just... It felt like they rando dropped it one day. I just got an update on my phone or something. It said, Witcher Season 2 is out now. And I'm like, what the shit? Um, I decided I wanted to rewatch Season 1 first for the third time. So I did. I watched Season 1. Uh, and then I watched Season 2. And I, I liked... I like season two. I'm not gonna know how much I like it until I rewatch it, but. Hey, what up, Michael Michaelson? How you doing? But a playwright trying to make it on Broadway. Is he trying to do it before he turns 30? Is that is that the gimmick? Is that the is that the premise? Is that the idea? <laughs> man, <laughs> sorry. I just I opened up Twitter, and Co Carnage had a clip where Elden Ring was laggy as fuck on PC, and it was getting it got him killed. And then Omega just uploaded a clip where Elden Ring was laggy as fuck, and then took over the controls for his character and made him die. Even when it stopped lagging, he couldn't control his character anymore. And his guy ran around until he died on PC. And man, I saw a lot. <laughs> I saw a couple people trying to push that on Horizon. Because I guess Horizon has a memory leak or had a memory leak. I don't know if it still does or not. Where if you played the game for like four, five, six, seven hours straight, which means you're really into the fucking game. But if you played the game for like six or seven hours straight, uh, a memory leak would start to give you frame, like your frames would start to drop. And you basically just save your game, restart the PlayStation, and you're good to go again. For another five, six, seven hours till the memory leak hits. I saw... I saw people trying to push that on Horizon, like, oh, Horizon's so bad, you know, fucking gar I'm not playing this fucking garbage till they fix it, this is so fucking stupid. I saw people going in hard on that. And these are the same people who I know are like the Elden Ring types. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder how they're going to deal with the, with the horrible Elden Ring lag that is getting people murdered by big bosses they're about to beat. Interesting. I don't know, so that's just me cheesing it up over here, but... I've been working on a musical for like five years. He's getting old and he still hasn't finished it. So it's kind of those two things coming together. Gotcha, gotcha. Were they also cyberpunk defenders? Maybe, but I don't really feel like that's related. If they were a cyberpunk, if they, if they were a cyberpunk defender on launch, I'd blast the fuck out of anybody doing that. But I mean, I cyberpunk was so long ago. I don't know. I can't like cross reference if it's the same people or not. Um. But no, I still don't understand Cyberpunk Defenders now. Because Cyberpunk announced like, oh, we're launching the PS5 version. It comes with a whole plethora of bug fixes and we updated a lot of shit and we changed the skill tree and some character creation stuff. And then the first thing I saw was a picture of a bug of a car like flipping upside down. Cyberpunk is all right on PS5 right now. I feel like that's, I feel like that's the best reasonable answer. I feel like the best possible answer for Cyberpunk within reason is that it exists and it's okay now as a video game. Because what Cyberpunk is now is still not half the shit they promised Cyberpunk would be. This is a trend. I know which side of the fence I come down on, but I don't know how I feel about it. This is a trend that I don't like with video games. And then, like I said, when it comes down to it, I know which side of the fence I'm on, but I don't know how to feel about it. Where a game like Cyberpunk or No Man's Sky will come out. Hey, what up, Memphis? How you doing? A game like Cyberpunk or No Man's Sky will come out. And the game will be nothing close to what they promised, right? And like... We are talking from two different companies that both hyped up. Both of them essentially promising in two different time periods. The cra one of the craziest video games ever made that we have literally ever seen. That was that was the promise, that was the hype. Both games backed with a bunch of specific phrases and like actual things promised. Cyberpunk promised immersive movement through really large crowds and shit like that. 
uh, No Man's Sky promised a million things, and neither of them delivered on that. So when you have people who see these things, uh, one of which is a respected AAA company in CD Projekt Red, the other one was kind of an indie company, so I understand it a lot more with them. But either way, when you have these things hyped up to the moon and people who were following your game from the beginning, from its inception of getting announced to the public, uh, and getting super, super jazzed up and believing everything you're saying, and then that game comes out, no Man's Sky, Cyberpunk straight up lied. Cyberpunk also just straight up fucking lied. But, uh, when that game comes out, those people have a right to be pissed when they don't get everything they were promised. Those people have a right to go, hey, this is not what was listed. Lotus and I were actually fucking same brain link, or same fucking brain waves on this. Almost knew that that game was not going to be what the fuck they said it was when, before Cyberpunk came out. And those people have a right to be upset and say this game is dog shit and refund it or not buy it and trash the company because they promised you everything and they did not do half of it, right? On the flip side, you have a bunch of people who didn't really give a shit and never paid attention or looked into it. And then they pick up No Man's Sky or Cyberpunk on launch. And they're like, yeah, this game's fine. I feel like Moon is one of those people for Cyberpunk. He's like, yeah, I played it. As, you know, it's whatever. It's the video game. I went through it. Um... I think Danny and Runeby both played No Man's Sky on launch. Like, without reading or buying in any of the hype beforehand or, like, knowing what they were promised and what was being taken from them. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, you know, you go out and you collect shit, you go back. It's fine as a game. And I get that that's possible, but even if that's your thought process, I don't think anybody has a right to, like, try to discount people being angry at not getting what they were promised. It's like if somebody had never played Pokemon before. Actually, half the fans who did play Pokemon before went through this and they didn't give a shit. So the Pokemon community is different, though. It's like if someone never played Pokemon before and then Sword and Shield comes out. And Sword and Shield looks like ass. And it has a bunch of Pokemon that got removed in it. And Game Freak lied to people and they said they had to remove Pokemon to work on animations, even though all the animations were the exact fucking same as the generation before from 3DS. So they didn't do that. They just fucking lied. Uh, and they called Pokemon back so that way they could sell them to you as DLC later. And they got rid of the National Dex because they didn't want you having too much fun with it. Uh... But if you'd never played Pokemon before, and you never paid attention to the updates, you don't know any of that. You just boot up Sword and Shield, and like, you might like it. Like, okay, Sword and Shield, this this is sort of, there's a lot of talking, but this is fun. Uh, meanwhile, Pokemon fans who were sat back, lied to, spit on, shit on, and then, you know, have to buy stuff they already had before as DLC from Game Freak are like this, you know, reasonable ones are like, this fucking sucks. Yeah, this is stupid. Um... I think it's possible for those same people to have fun, but, like, I do not think it's reasonable to just discount the people who are upset at just being fucking lied to and not getting what they were promised. People who have been back in games for a long time. I think it's especially... I think it's extra despicable when it's companies like... Uh, Game Freak's a little bit different in this scenario. I'm, I'm going to keep it to the No Man's Sky uh, Cyberpunk comparison. I think it's it's twice as bad when a AAA company like CD, CD Projekt Red does it. Or EA, or, you know, whoever does shit like that in this day and age. But I think I think it's twice as bad when you get a well-respected AAA company that has the money, like CD Projekt Red. Um, I feel like when it's, when it's an indie company, like, you know they're trying their best. You know they're fucking, they're putting their all into that shit, right? Pokemon Direct on the 27th. Hoping for Legends Arceus DLC uh, announcements. That's what I'm hoping for. Oh, Carnage clip, whose fucking cat was that? I think it's the same fight Omega's on. If you go to Omega's Twitter, uh, pretty sure a cat also fucked him up. You don't have to buy the Pokemon. Okay, Heartless, nobody will trade me the Pokemon. What do I do? Hypothetical, Heartless, nobody will trade me the Pokemon from the DLC. None of my friends bought it. What do I do? How do I acquire the Pokemon that I don't have to buy, Heartless? Pokemon Home, can you explain Pokemon Home to me? What, what, what do you, like, just, just for those of us who, who might not be educated, can you explain what Pokemon Home is? Less than three. Hi, Am. Thank you for the four, uh, thank you for four months. Appreciate you. Hold on, I'm, I'm in deep conversation with Pokemon fans right now.
I am fucking dying for this. <laughs> Sorry, I know there's Twitch delay and they have to type it out. I'm, I am dying for this Pokemon Home explanation. Or just, just, I just want to know what it is. Pokemon Home stores your Pokemon from different games. So you're telling me I either buy the DLC or I have to buy a completely different fucking game? On a different console? So I either buy the DLC to buy the Pokemon or I have to buy a 3DS and whatever game on the 3DS has the Pokemon I want so I can go catch it and Pokemon Home it? I don't think that's the argument you think it is. It was free for 30 days for a bit. So it, it's also a subscription? He was right. I don't have to buy the DLC. Heartless was correct. You don't have to, you don't have to buy the DLC. It's just if you don't buy the DLC, you have to buy a 3DS the Pokemon game that has the Pokemon you want in it on the 3DS, and then apparently pay a subscription for Pokemon Home. So instead of buying the DLC to Sword and Shield, you could just do that. What is that? That's like $400. Actually, no, that's a lot more nowadays, but that's different. We're, we're gonna go We're gonna go back off of when the DLC came out. We're gonna go off right now. Because right now, prices on 3DSs and games are going through the fucking roof because they just got discontinued. But back then, what was the 3DS? 300 bucks? 250 maybe? So this is like 300. 350. I also need Pokemon Bank that costs five for you. I'm assuming Pokemon Home and Bank don't both have a subscription. I'm assuming he was talking about the one of those. I'm assuming he's talking about Bank. Home was free for a while, but you still need a Pokemon bank, which you need to buy. So, I, wait. So, I need home. A, I need a home subscription and a bank subscription? If you have Pokemon Go with the subscription, you could transfer those Pokemon as well. What if I, what if I want a Pokemon that, like, only spawns in Zimbabwe or whatever the fuck? You know what I'm talking about? Aren't there regional, aren't there regional variants? Also, the concept of pulling up, pulling up, let's go, and then just waiting and praying that the Pokemon I want just shows up one day is also asinine to me, but that's different. Pokemon Bank and Home is the same subscription. Okay, good. I mean, that's the whole thing is still not good, but like that's to me, it sounds like the alternative to buying the DLC is a million times worse than buying the DLC. Ergo, to me. The best option is still to buy the the DLC, which is still dog shit. Which is still ass. That was the only point I was making. Anyway, hoping for hoping for RCS DLC news. <laughs> anyway, in the Pokemon Direct coming up, hoping for some RCS DLC moves. Uh news. Because they, uh, the reason I'm hoping for it, by the way, this isn't like based on nothing. Uh, Nintendo typically drops DLCs for this kind of quick, if I recall correctly. Um, just for stuff like this. Usually it might be cut or cold content. Um, that they didn't have time or they rushed to not, so they didn't have time to put it in the release version. Um... But apparently data miners found data data miners found a new area, like a new map. And at first they couldn't get to a lot of it, like because they could they could load their character into this map area that they shouldn't be in, but they couldn't move around a bunch. And then one of them found like a, essentially a platforming skip where they were able to get out and they were able to run around in parts of this half loaded map that was stored away. They originally thought it was unused assets, but when they got close to it, they realized it's a huge area and it might be its own new region kind of thing. Or at least uh, it's its own new zone. Um, so it looked like they were working on another area for Legends Arceus when they they cut it out. Uh, which would lead me to believe that like we might be getting a, a DLC pack for Arceus this soon. I'm not going to lie. I don't give a fuck about Gen 9. Um, 
Sun and Moon was bad. Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon was bad. Sword and Shield was not good. Like, I, I didn't buy it because I just, I hated the concept of what Sword and Shield was. Um, I had a blast of Let's Go. I would love a Let's Go Johto to be announced. And I had a blast with Arceus. Arceus DLC would be amazing. That's It's not that I'm not excited for Pokemon. I am not excited for mainline Pokemon. If they do any side shit, I'm probably there. Fuck, I want Pokemon Quest too, man. I had so much fun with Quest. Uh, Chubaloo. How you doing? Remember the Pokemon Snap dreams? Pokemon Snap 2 was good. I don't think it was my kind of game. Because I, I got stuck somewhere where I, I missed the thing to unlock the next level. So I was stuck for like an hour and a half of my last stream. But I... I was having an okay, not great time anyway. When we quit playing that one. There was some good moments, but like, it, I, I'll never beat that game and that's okay. I'll probably never beat that game and if I don't, that's okay, I should say. What I am going to need... I am, if they do announce Legends Arceus DLC, what I am going to need is I'm going to need a slew of new Pokemon. I'm going to need a region with almost exclusively Pokemon that were not in the original game. I know I just bitched at a Sword and Shield, a mainline game for culling back on Pokemon and then selling them to you later as DLC, but I feel like Legends Arceus is different and Legends Arceus is also desperately in need of more fucking Pokemon. Because if they show me a new area and the first thing I see is a goddamn Shinx, I'm going to lose it. I think moving on in the Legends games, uh, <clears throat> I'm assuming they're going to be called the Legends games. This is called Legends Arceus, but I'm assuming they're going to have Legends Other Legendary going forward, right? Uh, moving on to Pokemon games, do you think they're going to do different regions in the past? Yes, I think Gen 2 is primed. Um, Gen 2 and Gen 3 are both primed for that, because you have, you know, Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre in the past, or whatever the fuck. And you also have, like, maybe the first time they fought, because they had fought before, and it got broken up by Rayquaza. Even more so, I think Gen 2, I think the Johto region's good for that. Because you have the original towers. Both original towers still standing before the one burns down with the Eevee, Vaporeon, and Jolteon in it. And then Ho-Oh comes in and resurrects him and makes him the three legendary dogs. That's all fucking primed. You also have the, the runs of Alf, ruins of Alf. Already set up in Johto, which is supposed to be some old school ancient shit. So I think Johto... Uh, I don't know enough about 5 and 6. I, I can't say on those because I haven't actually played those. But uh, I know Johto and ho are prepped for that. Gen 1 with the Great Pokemon War? Didn't the Gen... Did, didn't the Great Pokemon War take place in Gen 5? Isn't that a Gen 5 thing? Am I on a crack? Six is the Great War? Gotcha, gotcha. You guys can hear the music I have on, right? In the background? It looks like, from what you guys are saying, it looks like 2, 3, because this this was Gen 4, it looks like 2, 3, 5, and 6 are all primed for uh, would all be good pickings for another Legends game. I don't know what you would do with Gen 1. I feel like you would almost be better off tying Gen 1 into Gen 2. You just do Johto Kanto again. But uh, apparently Kanto and Johto were in a completely different war in the past. Oh, shit. Black and White 2, there was a book that said lakes in Unova connected to lakes in Sinnoh. I don't know if Nintendo would show war. It's not Nintendo, it's Game Freak you'd have to worry about. Nintendo has fucking Fire Emblem is Nintendo. Bayonetta is Nintendo. You know what I mean? Like, that's not, it's not a Nintendo thing. It'd be a Game Freak thing in what is very much established as a kid's game. They'd have a very tough time actually showing war. Legends Mew? Yeah, but does Kanto have a lot in its... Even in Fire Red Leaf Green, does Kanto have a lot in its backstory? About, like, ancient history?
That's what I'm saying. Like, there's really no backwards. Kanto was on the cusp of new shit. They had just, you know, made Porygon. They had just made Ditto while trying to make Mewtwo to copy Mew. The Pokemon study was still relatively newish, I guess. I mean, okay, 150 down, but... Um, and also, just from a game developer standpoint, when they made that game, they didn't—they weren't thinking in the past because they were trying to make something new. They were trying to—they were literally making something from nothing at that point in time. So I don't think they gave it a lot of history or what used to happen in general. But it started with Johto. I would love to see Johto. I think Hoenn would also be great. And then you guys are selling me on five and six, even though I don't really know the backstories on those. Until lore is Mew and Mewtwo, and that's it. Yeah, and Mewtwo didn't exist until he was made literally right before the game starts. Like, Mewtwo had not been around very long at all before Red starts, Pokemon Red starts. Yeah, I mean, they'd have to start from scratch and make up some shit about Kanto. It, it, they'd almost probably have to, like, maybe... I don't want to say they'd have to alter some stuff, but they just have to change a lot of stuff's meaning. Like... You think this is this, but really this came here from this historical event that happened before. Okay, maybe you, maybe Poke Nerds who know more about Gen 5 than me can, uh, can fill this out. Um... And two's ready for another remake anyway. Frankly, I hope it's Let's Go Johto. But either way. Um, and honestly, they could do that. Because they dropped Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus side by side. For the same reason. So, whatever. But anyway. Uh, maybe Pokémoners can help me out. I follow a guy who pointed out that an official Pokémon artist drew recently all of the Pokémon champions on one screen. And N was a champion on it. Which it's... Correct me if I'm wrong, but it had never really been confirmed 100% that N went on to become champion anywhere, had it? Or did he? And I, I'm just on crack. The guy seemed to... The guy was talking like it had never been... It had never really been stated before. N beats Alder? Okay. And then you beat N in like a blue situation? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The guy seemed very happy and surprised at the fact that he drew in in the champions list because he didn't he he didn't seem to believe that N was 100% confirmed champion before that moment. What is the other weird one? Pisses me off when I hear it, but it seems accurate. Oh, as far as the anime is concerned, uh. Tobias lost lost to Cynthia. As far as the anime explains in any facet, Tobias curb stomped Ash into the dust and then went on to lose to Cynthia. That is asinine. I'd like to go back and play Gen 5 and 6. I never played them. If I'm going to pick up 5, I'm going to pick it up on the Poke MMO. If I ever get the hankering for the Poke MMO again, that's how I'll play 5. That's how I played 4. What do you mean? Well, in the anime, one season basically ends with Ash getting curb stomped by Tobias in the Pokemon League. The same Pokemon League that would lead to Cynthia. But then in the next season, Tobias isn't champion. Cynthia is. So unless Tobias beat her and then decided he didn't want to be champ and he was going to keep it moving... Cynthia had to have beaten him. As far as the anime is concerned, the champion for Sword and Shield is the strongest trainer alive. Fucking Kagi, fucking size, the strongest trainer to ever live? Or wait, no, that's the Alola region. I don't know who the champion in Sword and Shield is. Fuck. Cynthia is only confirmed top eight alongside Lance. Lance is a badass. I'm glad Lance is there. 
Didn't he have two legendaries? He had at least two legendaries. That's all we ever saw out of Tobias was two legendaries because he never needed a third Pokemon. Peggy Sword and Shield? Okay, good. I was right. Okay, good, 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 good. Peggy play. Okay, I was only thinking of Leon. I was only thinking of Leon. I don't even remember who the voice actor... Or not the voice actor. I don't even remember who the champion for Alola is. Unless Leon is both. It did Lance dirty in the anime. He had Dragonite use Earthquake on a Charizard. Oof. I can't come on Thunder. I don't know. No, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking of anime. Champion for Alola. Uh, I was thinking of the game. I, I went back to when I played through Pokemon Moon. Yeah, I know goofy looking fucking 1960s cartoon era Ash. Ends up winning that league. I, I was trying to. Th I was trying to think of who the champion was in the, in the game. Pikachu has been known to Thunderbolt Onyx while he was wet, and Thunderbolt a Rhydon while he wasn't wet, just because. <laughs> but you hit if, if you hit the very tippy part of the horn, he dies. In the new anime, Lance uses a red Gyarados. As his ace versus Leon and not Dragonite. Isn't Leon also a Dragon Trainer? Or am I on crack? Ash should have won Kalos. Ash should have won Kalos when the animation looked really good. And the animation itself looks really good also in uh, Sun and Moon. But I guess what I should say is the art style. The art style is so fucking... If you're trying to get, like, like a serious fight and look good, the art style is so fucking dick in Sun and Moon, man. I hate it. The animation... I don't think you can argue the animation. The animation looks great, but the art style itself is ass. When when he was in Kalos and it was serious, and he had a boss-ass team ready to go, Ash should have won that. And he had the type advantage on a special Mind Leak Pokemon from the fucking... I want to say from the future. That's not true. No reason he should have lost that fight. Literally none at all. Not a one. Ash had an amazing team in Sinnoh, but that menace Paul was there. He beats Paul. It's one of my favorite fights. It's one of my favorite fights in the anime. He beats Paul. Pokemon staff apologized for not letting Ash win in Kalos League because everyone was so fucking mad. Yeah, and then they made him win the next league, which would have been fine, except they dumbed down the fucking goofy-ass cartoony look of that show so much, I didn't care anymore. I saw I saw the trailer for the first season, or for the first episode of that, and I was like, nope. I immediately went fucking nope. How does this special Greninja lose to Blast Bird? <laughs> he looked like he had whiskers. I feel like he's always had the sideways Z's. He just looks like, oh, oh God. It looks like a show for five-year-olds. And I get, it's actually a show for seven-year-olds, but like, goddamn. It looked, it looked so much better the year before. I just did not give a fuck. That was, that was actually the worst possible timeline. Anything else could have happened in any other order. And I would have been happier than him losing the Kalos League the way he did and then winning the next one when it looks like a fucking goober simulator. Ash's current anime team is fire, by the way. Don't care. He looks like a goober. The Pokemon probably look like goobers. If I were to predict, I'd say I'd say the Pokemon company or the fuck is running the shows would apologize 
to the viewers by having Ash win roughly until they change up the art design to where he doesn't look like a fucking like he's on fucking <laughs> to where he doesn't look like he's like he belongs on Nick Jr. anymore and as soon as he starts looking real again he's gonna go back to losing Cesaro leaving WWE I went into more detail in the beginning of the stream so we were talking about WWE earlier but uh Cesaro is one of the few people where I agree with the takes when people, like when somebody leaves WB and people go, oh my god, they weren't getting used to their maximum potential. They'll do so much better everywhere else. I disagree with it when people say that shit 99% of the time. Cesaro is one of the guys where he got cut and I'm like, he's going to go fuck it up somewhere else. He's going to do really well somewhere else where they got room for him. Design for Sword and Shield isn't as cool as it was for Kalos, but it's not as goofy as Alola. Gotcha, gotcha. What time is it? Oh my god, chat, make a wish. It is 11.11 11 p.m. Apparently Elden Ring is officially out legally for everyone who didn't get an early code. Sorry, I was reading some. Okay. On that note, I'm going to point out, uh, I just wanted to check in. I know I hadn't streamed properly in a while. Um, no, but yeah, suddenly nobody in chat is aware of what time those are. Uh, I just wanted to, wanted to pop in for a little bit. Just say, hey, say what's up. Um, I plan on being able to stream again as soon as the weekend's over, either Sunday uh, night or Monday. I just get back in back in the groove of shit on Monday uh, is the plan. Sorry I've been gone. Just don't know what's been wrong with me lately. But say what's up. You know, let you know I'm still here and let you know I am. Give me one more weekend. I will be back soon. And we will be fucking it up out here. As it were. Where is... Did he fucking... No, Twitch just didn't show him. Maybe I didn't, I, I didn't scroll down far enough. Uh, Hom is streaming Elden Ring. Hom has been streaming Elden Ring for six hours. If you want to watch Elden Ring, stay, stay in here. Go to Hom. If you do not want six hours deep Elden Ring spoilers... Oh, that was weird. Why is this happening? Do they want me to type it out? What the fuck happened here? I can't wait, no! I literally... Okay, Twitch fucked up their raid command. It literally would not let me raid. It literally would not let me raid. Anyways, if you guys want to watch Elden Ring, you don't care about any of that, uh, go watch Hom. Uh, I'm raiding Hom. If you guys uh, don't want six hours deep into Elden Ring spoilers because you're going to play the game yourself and you want to watch somebody else do it, then don't go to the raid. Anyways, appreciate y'all. Um, as always, I'm Thundershot. I'm out. Peace late. I will catch you guys uh, Sunday night, Monday, hopefully, if, if I'm back on my, on my real shit. And uh, y'all be easy. Have a good night, everybody.